Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create this interesting shape tile style pattern in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to start with a new file and I suggest for the first time that you make this pattern you stick with the same dimensions as I'm using. I'm using a file that's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels so I'll click create. I need a couple of guidelines here so I'm going to view and then rulers and show rulers. I'm going to drag out a ruler line but before I do that I'm going to make sure that I have no stroke and no fill. It's just going to make life a bit easier. I'm going to drag out a ruler into approximately the 500 point on this line that's halfway across and up here on the control bar I'm going to click the horizontal align center and the vertical align center. That's making sure my guide is right in the middle of the document. If I open up the transform panel and select the middle of these little nine reference points we should read 500 500. So I'm going to click away and this time I'm going to make a second guide going in the opposite direction again placing it approximately in position. Click horizontal line center and vertical align center and just confirm that its middle is at 500 500. This next step is really important so go to the last panel just open up this layer and lock down these two guides. You won't be able to see them if you've got no fill no stroke guides but they can get in the way if you don't hide them. So now we're going to use the pen tool. I want a stroke so I'm just going to click here on the stroke and I'm going to make it black for now. I'm going to make it about a four point stroke and I'm going to the pen tool so I'm just going to click on the pen tool. If you're not comfortable using the pen tool I quite understand but this is very simple. I'm going to step you through it. You're going to hover over this line and you're going to come down about a quarter of the way, maybe a fifth of the way down that line and when you get to see the guide indicator appear you're just going to click and hold. You're going to add the shift key and that will allow you to drag in a perfectly vertical direction. We want this vertical direction. As soon as we've got it looking about like this we're going to let go the left mouse button and then let go the shift key and you'll see that we're now positioned with our line starting going in a vertical direction. We're going to come over here and we're going to imagine that there is a line drawn from one corner to the opposite corner across this square and we're going to come just below that line about in this position about halfway across and we're going to click and drag and we're going to spin our handle around pointing to the bottom right of the document. Not all the way there but we just want a bit of a curve here on this line. We're going to let go and we're going to press the escape key to stop drawing. Now we can go to the direct selection tool because this allows us to select these individual points. If you didn't get it right you can fix it now. I'm actually going to come and drag this one over a little bit and I could also adjust its handle if I wanted to. Now this one here we won't want to adjust its handle because it was going in the perfect direction but we could move it up or down if we needed to. You want to hold the shift key when you do this just making sure that you're moving in a vertical direction but I'm pretty happy with that line. Now I'm going to click away from it to deselect it and then this step is really important. You want to go across here to the selection tool because we want to be able to reflect this entire line. So we're going to select over it with the selection tool. We'll choose object transform and then reflect and we're going to reflect across the vertical. Now we want the original which came down in this direction plus this copy so we're just going to click here on copy. Now the one that we just made is already selected so we're going to move it. So you're going to hold down the shift key as you just drag it into position. Now I lost it so I'm just going to pick it up again. Hold the shift key and just move it across. We're going to join these two together so I'm just going to drag over both of them to select them. Again this is why it's really important to have locked those guides down because we don't want the guides to get in the way. We're going to object path and then join and that should join us into a single shape. Let's go to the last palette. We should see here a single shape for this line and we should have our two guides. Now we're going back to the pen tool. We're going to turn off the stroke and turn off the fill and you're just going to click once. So you're going to find the middle of this document, the middle of these two lines where it says intersect and you're going to click once and then you're going to let go and then you're going to press escape. So what we've done is we've added a point. You can see it here in the layers palette. It's a point in the middle of the document. We can double check by clicking on the transform 
options to make sure its middle is at 500, 500, which it is. What we're doing this for is we want to be able to rotate this shape around and we have to have a center point to do it around. So this is the easiest way of doing it. So I'm going to select over both this shape and this center point and we're going to make a group out of them with object and then group. Because they're now a grouped object, I can rotate them. Effect, distort and transform and then transform. Now we're going to make three copies of this. So I'm going to select three and we're going to rotate it around 90 degrees. So let's just type in 90 degrees. Now if this happens to you, it's because the rotation point is incorrect. You can see that we've got nine little boxes here and at the moment we're rotating around the midpoint of the shape. What we want to do is to rotate around the middle bottom point of the shape. So that's this point here. And you'll find that your shape is going to look different to mine. That's just fine. We're just going to click OK. So we're coming back into this group here. So I'm just going to open up the group in the layers palette. I'm going to make sure that I select only this path. So this is the path that makes this shape. And at this point, I want to do something to make it look a little bit better because it's not looking very well lined up. Now I could use the direct selection tool or I can just fix the shape. So I could drag up a little bit or down a little bit. I could drag this down a little bit, but you can see that all four sides are being changed as I'm doing it. What I actually want to do is I want to bring these lines in a bit. So let's go back to selecting on this, but let's go to the direct selection tool. At the moment, all three of these anchor points that make this line are selected. So I'm just going to click away and I'm going to click on this anchor point, hold the shift key and click on this anchor point. So I've got this one selected and this one selected, but I don't have this one selected. What I want to do is come across here to the scale tool. When you click on the scale tool, what happens is that any movement you make to one of these selected points, the opposite movements is going to happen to the other one. So just watch as I do it. You can see both of them are being brought inwards. So we're adjusting both these anchor points exactly perfectly as we do this. So what I want to do is just make sure I get a better shape. I really wasn't happy with that shape at all. So I'm pretty happy with this now. So I'm going to let go and I want to stop working with the scale tools. So I'm going back to the selection tool here. Now I can go back to this shape and I can just adjust it a little bit if I want to from the top. Now once I'm happy with my overall shape and what we're looking at is the outline, so we want it to be sort of a little bit organic here. Once we get to this stage, we're good to go. So firstly, what I'm going to do is go and get these guides. I'm going to unlock them and I'm going to delete them. So in the layers palette, I can just select on one and shift click on the other. They don't actually have to be selected. I can just click the trash can. Now I'm going to select my group. This is actually a group that has an effect applied to it. Because if I go to the appearance panel, you see that there's a transform effect here. So what we have to do is we want to bake this in. So we're going to object expand appearance. In the layers palette, you'll see that that now gives you groups of these objects. So we're going to ungroup everything, object ungroup and then object ungroup. Now, this is the secret. This is the reason why we made that middle dot have no fill and no stroke, because when you ungroup, because it had no fill and no stroke, it's just removed. So it's not actually part of this. We've just got four little paths here. All four paths are selected as they should be. So we're going now to the Shape Builder tool. It's here. It shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. So I'm going to select the Shape Builder tool. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to drag downwards and that's going to make a single filled shape out of this object with a whole lot of other little bits and pieces as well. So let's have a look at the Layers palette and see what we've got. Down the very end here is our shape. So that's the shape that we want. All these other bits are just little bits. So what we're going to do is lock this down for now and let's just hide it. So everything that's left over is all of these bits and pieces, none of which we want. So we're just going to press delete. Now we can restore the visibility of our shape and we can unlock it. If we have a look over here for fill and stroke, you can see that this shape has a stroke and it has no fill. So we can 
apply a fill to it, just switch these around. Now I'd also like a stroke because that's going to give me some alternatives to work with in future. So I'm going to click on stroke and I'm going to make it a different color. It doesn't matter what color it is, it just has to be different. And I'm going to make it quite big. I'm thinking about 12 points is pretty good. We're also going to have a look at the end points here. You can see that we've got pointy bits here but these edges here are not pointy so let's just select over them and see if we can get something that is a little better of an effect. And we can get it by changing the alignment of the stroke. So instead of align stroke to center we're aligning the stroke to the inside and if we look at it now we've got these nice little pointy ends. I just think it looks a bit better. So we're ready now to go ahead and to make our pattern but what we need is another one of these shapes. So let me just close down my layers palette for now. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab this shape so I'm going to select over it. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key. I'm just going to drag the duplicate up and what we want for this duplicate is we want it to be placed over the top corner of the artboard. Again, this is why we have an artboard that is a fixed size. So I'm going to select this shape, just double check in the transform dialog. The middle of this shape should be at 1000 on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. It's just a little bit off so I'm using my keyboard to just center it up. So we're good now. To make our pattern we have to select both of these shapes because if you just select one of them the other one's going to be left out of your pattern. We'll choose object and then pattern make at this point I like to hide the artboard because it's just in my way so I'm going to choose view and then hide artboards. I'm going to zoom out so I'm clicking on the zoom tool. I'm going to hold the alt key down as I zoom out. The size of my pattern tile has to be the size of the artboard, the size of the shape we were working with. That's 1000 by 1000. So we can just type that in here and when we do you can see the pattern is appearing. I'm going to increase the number of copies because that has no effect whatsoever on the pattern itself. So I'm pretty happy with this pattern at this stage so I'm just going to click done. I'm going to turn my artboards back on with view and then show artboards. I'm going to grab my shapes and just move them out of the way. I'll create a rectangle that is 1000 by 1000 pixels the size of my artboard. I'm going to center it on my artboard with these center options. I'm going to press Control and 0 to center the artboard so I can see what's going on. I'm going to turn off the stroke. I don't want a stroke. I'm going to target the fill. Going to my swatches panel and here is my pattern. Now I'm going to scale the pattern with Object Transform Scale because I want to see a little bit better how it's performing. So I want to do a uniform scale so I'm just going to click on that. I don't want to transform the object, in other words that rectangle, I just want to transform the pattern. I'm going to bring this down to 40% and this is what my pattern is looking like but it doesn't have a background on it. So if I want to add a background to it, let's see how we would do that. I'm going to make a duplicate of this pattern so I'm just going to drag this pattern onto the plus symbol here so I got two copies of it. I'm just going to double click on one of them. I'm going to again just use the zoom tool so I can zoom out a little bit just see what's going on here. The width and height of my pattern are 1000 by 1000 and so what I want is a rectangle that is 1000 by 1000. Right now I have a pattern fill here so I'm just going to click here on color and you'll see that that has no effect at all on this fill. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on gradient and then you're going to click on color. For some reason it works if you do that and it doesn't if you just click on a color. So what we need to do is to make a rectangle. So I'm going to the rectangle tool. Note that I've got a fill color that's not in use in my design and I have no stroke. That's critical. Do not add a stroke to this or things aren't going to work. I'm going to click in here. I'm going to make a rectangle, a thousand by a thousand. I'll click OK. At the moment the rectangle's on top of everything which is why everything disappeared. So it's still selected. I'm going to choose Object Arrange send to back and that sends it to the back of everything. But you can see that there are bits of our pattern that are missing. So we've got our rectangle selected here. All we're going to do is move it wherever it needs to go to not cut things off. So I've just moved it 
out over here and I'm just doing a quick check of the shapes to make sure that nothing is cut off and nothing is cut off so I'm just going to click on done so that's going to give me a second version of my pattern so let's just select this shape let's go to the swatches panel and here is a second version of the pattern now having made these colors three different colors we can then adjust them at any time so with this shape filled with the pattern selected I'm going to the red color artwork dialog I'm going to click on advanced options because I'm using black right now black is not set to be recolored so what I'm going to do is click in here and I do want to add a new color to the current harmony I'm going to make sure there's an arrow there so that it is mapped I'm going to click on edit now you can see up here that there's two blacks and there will be two blacks in here so let me just unlink my harmony colors there are two blacks so what we're going to do is work out which of these blacks is actually functional when I click on either of them nothing happens and that's because of these settings here so what we're going to do is click on one of them adjust the brightness and see if anything happens well things did happen so this is the active black if you like and this one is not an active black so if I make it a different color you can see that nothing's happening here so we're going to remove it by just right clicking and choose remove color so now I have three colors in my pattern and I can start doing something with them other than just making things that look really pretty ugly if you find that colors won't go any darker for example this blue is not coming any darker you can adjust adjust its brightness down and that will get you closer to the colors that you're looking for so any one of these colors can be adjusted by just dragging on it or you can also adjust it in here by increasing the saturation decreasing the brightness or just adjusting the hue there are also settings for for example RGB so if you want to work with RGB you can do so when you find a color combination you like just click OK and then you can go back and click this pattern again and make a different version of it but every time that you click OK you're going to end up with a different pattern colorway so this was the original that doesn't have a background on it this was the one that we made with a background but not being particularly choosy about our colors and this is the version that has better colors I'm just going to scale this one because it's very very large and so we could go back again and color this one a different color once you've made the pattern once then you can have a look at other alternatives for making it or for adjusting the shapes that you already have this is one I made where the shapes are slightly smaller so I just scaled them down a little smaller I've also made them different colors so the two shapes that I wanted to have in my design are both different colors let me just show you what they look like they're scaled down a little bit they're different colors and what they've got is a radial gradient in the middle of each of them and that's given me this result and then of course once I got this result then I was able to recolor it to something that was more pleasing perhaps to me once I actually had something that I could work with so you have plenty of alternatives that you can work with with these designs once you've got the basics of creating that initial shape if you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results then you'll love my Skillshare content I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.